Hello, in this video, I'll take you through step-by-step -step, um, guide on how to fix a Panasonic PABS TES A24. And with this guide, you can fix virtually any kind of a PABX available in the market right now. So sit back, relax, and I'll take you through all the process one by one. Okay, so these are the materials needed for this installation. They're all in this box. So I'll take you through uh, what the materials are and what I'm going to be using them for. This is an intercom phone. That is what we're going to be using. And then the PABS machine itself. This is a Panasonic PABX824. This is TES824 Panasonic PABX. And that is the machine we're going to be using for this installation so I'll just open open it so that you see what is inside inside this PABS we have the softwares you can see the softwares are all on the top cover so this is the software that we are going to be using for the installation on the system then we have the cables that is attached to it this is the power cable that came with it and that is what I'm going to be using and then we still have okay this is uh, like a zip tie that we're going to use to hold the cables together so I'll just remove this and here is the main PABX itself so this is a Panasonic TES A24 PABX and I'll just keep it aside for now so that we can check other items that we are going to be working with. This is a two pair flat cable and this is RJ level face plate. So the kind of face plate I have is this double face plate. So that is what we are going to be using for this installation. So I want to open one to see the kind of faceplate we have. You can see this is a double port faceplate. So I'm going to be connecting the two so that if one of the port goes bad or one of the cable goes bad due to one reason or the other, we we'll just switch to the other port pending when I will come again for servicing. So I have a couple of them here and then I have the pack rest also for for this faceplate because of I'm going to be running surface cable here. The cable, the office is already set up, so I'm going to just be running uh, and surface cables on in the office environment. So we have this is still an intercom phone. I have uh, a lot of them here, so I'll just set aside all the intercoms aside. Now this is a GSM terminal, we are going to be installing this also because the client wants to be able to receive external calls from outside. So the client wants to receive external calls, so hence the reason for the GSM terminal. With this GSM terminal, we are going to slot our SIM card into the GSM terminal so we can receive external calls. So it can be this manual, you can go through it if you're installing yours for the very first time. But I won't be needing this manual because I've installed a lot of these uh, particular GSM terminals. So I, I won't be using a whole lot of them for this particular installation. So that's what we're going to be connecting it to. We're going to be connecting it to 
the PABX and uh, let me show you what the GSM terminal looks like so basically this is what the GSM terminal looks like it helps you receive external call and make normal GSM call with your with the phone so this is the port that is going to be connected from here to the PABX and this is the switch on and off and that is the power jack so I'm going to put this back and set it aside somewhere then we'll check other items that we are going to be installing So inside the GSM terminal, don't forget, they have the antenna also. So the antenna is very important and then the power adapter. So when the installation begins proper, I'll show you how to utilize the antenna and then how to install it also. So we have our intercom phone. Again, I'll set this aside somewhere. There's another intercom phones, and then we have the console. This is a KS8737 30 console. And this is what we're going to be using for programming the PBS to transfer calls and to receive external calls on this PBS that we're going to be working with. So this is what the GSM terminal looks like inside. You can see, this is it. This is what the GSM terminal looks like inside. And that is what we are going to be, that is what we are going to be working with. So this is the manual and this is KS7730. GSM terminal that's where you're going to be working with. So let's go. Let me show you the offices that we are going to be installing the phones. So this is the first office and this is the reception. And I'm going to be giving it number 101. That is what I'm going to the number I'm going to be giving the reception. And this is office two. I'm giving it 102. And this is the third office. I'm giving it one. O3. This is the fourth office. Okay, there's a fourth office here. Let me get in. Okay, this is will be the fourth office, which I will be giving 104 according to the client's demand. And this is the fifth office. I'm giving it 105. So remember, all these offices I customize it according to what the client want so you can also customize your number according to what you want as well so let me show you the gsm terminal again and show you one or two things that i missed out while trying to explain uh, um, what they work for now this is the face plate there are different kinds of face plates that you can use for this but i decided to use double um, port face plate with this particular uh, KS80-7730 uh, Panasonic PABA, Panasonic console. And the reason is because this one will be able to work with this particular PABS that I am working with, this PABS right here. Uh, bear in mind that all uh, phones doesn't work with all PABS. So you need to confirm that the uh, console you, you want will work with your own PABX. Now, let's start with uh, the measurement of our cable and our trunk before we begin the installation. It, it is very good to make sure if you have it approved, to make sure uh, your cables and your trunk so that when you are cutting it out, you it won't be excess because I want to do a neat job. I don't want any excess cable hanging around. 
and then the same thing goes for the trunk I make sure the trunk uh, correctly to to be sure that no excess trunk is hanging around anywhere the job has to be as neat as possible so I have my measurements here written on a piece of paper and that is what I'm going to to be working with uh, since this is a surface wiring that I'm going to be doing because the office is already set up and I don't want to go breaking the wall to bury cable within the wall so I'm going to do a neat job with the trunk in in this particular office so that is the reason why I am measuring it this way carefully so after the measurement I am going to to cut it out according to the sizes for each of them I have a size up here already so I'll just measure it out according to the sizes that I have and cut it out so that my work will be very 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 neat Okay, so next is cable laying around the office. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, follow the uh, measurement of the cables that I've already cut out and then I'm going to lay uh, the cables around the offices that I'm going to be placing the, the phones. So basically what I want to do right now is to follow the trunk. They have some trunks that I've, I'm fixing here already so I'll just take the cable inside the trunk so that it is neat and then nothing is going to break the cable later in future.
Now for this step, we are going to be installing the ROG 11 faceplate. And this is a third step I that I'm going to be working on now. The faceplate is set here. So what I'll do is to remove the screws and then I'm going to connect the cable to this particular faceplate. So this is the two ports that I'm going to be connecting my cables to. And the reason I'm connecting the two at the same time is so, so there won't be any downtime. Once one of the cable goes bad, due to one reason or the other, or one of the ports goes bad, I will, I will just instruct them to plug in the phone into the other port, pending when I'm available to service that particular phone. Okay, so this is what the the face will looks like at the other end of it so you have to follow the the cable and attach the the cables to the right port now i'm going to be using a multimeter for those of you who are who is using uh this particular faceplate for the very first time you have to confirm which of the cable is going to which port my Cream pin is going to be two in the middle. We have four on our RJ11, so it will be two in the middle. The two that I'm going to be working with will be the ones in the middle. If it's going to be the ones in the middle, the two in the middle, I am going to find out which of this cable is in the middle with my multimeter. So I'll just put in my multimeter and then I will check for continuity to find out which of them so from what i've been able to find out it will be the red and the green that i'm going to be working with so i'll connect my cables to the red and the green
So for this particular step, what I would do is to install the PABX. This is my Panasonic PABS. I'm going to be installing this PABS right now to its permanent position. So here is the software. I'm going to keep this aside and this is a screw. So I want to first um, fix the screw on the wall so I'll be able to hang the PABS. So that is the port spot where I want the PABS to, to be. Now while installing your PABX, make sure you consider ventilation also. Make sure you've made available for, for ventilation in the area where you'll be keeping your PABX. You don't want to keep it in a place where it will get too hot. So this is the spot where I will be attaching my screws to this spot and this spot. So I'll go to the wall and fix the screws on the wall so that I can attach the PABX. Okay, I'll fix my screws on the wall. I will just take the PABX and hang it on the spot where the screws are. So that is the two parts. I will just gently hang my PABX there. The reason why I'm fixing my PABX here is because this these particular spots have enough ventilation for air and it won't be disturbed by the workers within the office. Okay, the next step is for me to install my GSM terminal. So this is actually what enables your phone to be able to make and receive external GSM call. So you want to receive external GSM call, this is your go-to device for your PABX. So this is what you attach to your PABX to be able to help you make that um, GSM call in and outside your office. And to be able to transfer the calls to each of the departments within the office, this is the antenna that helps it receive signal. So I'm going to, it's magnetic, so I will just attach it anywhere where, where there is a metal. So this is the spot where I'm going to attach my my antenna for the GSM terminal. That is the spot for it. So like I said earlier, the reason for this antenna is to help receive signals. And this is my adapter. This is the power for the adapter. This device uses 12 volt adapter. So, you can see this is a 12 volt adapter for this particular uh, device. Now, the next thing I'm going to be using is my guard power surge. Power surge. The reason for this power surge is so that it doesn't damage your PABX or the or the adapter of the GSM terminal. This is very, very important that you use a power surge, especially if the office has irregular power supply or power supply that fluctuates once in a while. It is, it is advisable that you use a 
power surge to be able to protect especially your PABX your PABX uses direct power so if this is not there it's going to burn the main power supply inside now this is a GSM terminal we are going to be installing it on 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 the wall so this is you can say the band of this particular GSM terminal so you can select according to the preferred band that you want so this is the one I'm using for now and this will be able to meet the requirement of my client so that is what I'm working with the next is to install your your sim card this is a sim card registered sim card of the client so this particular number on the sim card is what the client wants to use as an external number where customers or clients outside the office can reach the office zone so with this particular number I, outsiders can call into the reception or or the marketing department and make inquiries about the office and then the receptionist can transfer the calls to the relevant department so you can see immediately i switch it on it begins to read this way and then after that it displays the number this is the gsm number and then you can see the gsm uh, signal bar is complete you can see the gsm bar so this GSM terminal is working fine and it can receive calls. So I'm going to place my GSM terminal here slightly above my PBX. So it will be easy for me to monitor and check if everything on this particular JSM terminal is fine. So this will be connected to my power surge. Remember I told you how important power surge is, especially if the electricity within that space fluctuates once in a while. So I'm going to carefully install the antenna where it won't be disturbed and then where it will be able to get signals easily.
Alright, so in this particular step, I'm going to be clipping my RJ11. So this is the RJ11 clips. I'm going to be crimping it together with the cable. So I'll show you how to do that. Now I'm going to make use of just two, just a pair of cable from this line of cable. You can see the difference. This is RJ45 and this is RJ11. RJ11 is smaller and then has fewer, fewer necks on it. So what, what I'll be needing is just two strips of the cable depending on the number you choose. So make sure you choose a number that is easy for you to uh, pick out easily. For example, if you're taking green, take green and then green white. If you're taking blue, take blue and blue white. So I'm going to just fix it in the middle. This has four legs, but I want to make use of the four legs in the middle according to the configuration on, on our face plate. Our face plate is two in the middle. So this also has to be two points in the middle. So it is inside right now. I'm going to put the two cables in the two points in the middle. I'm going to put in these cables on the two points in the, in the middle. So you push it in until it gets to the tip of it. You can see it has not gotten to the tip, so I'll remove it and then I'll readjust the cable again so that it gets to the tip, the tip of it. It was too long, so I have to just cut it out a bit. So I'm going to fix it in the two points and then push it in. So I think I've been able to get it. So you can see the two points in the middle and that's gotten to the end of it. So I'll push it in just to be sure. So I'll get my crimp, crimper and then fix in and then crimp it. See, you can see it has been crimped. <laughs> so I'm going to just complete the the remaining uh, measurement that is left.
so in this step we are going to be installing our GSM console so let's install the GSM console this is the GSM console and this is what we are going to be using for programming our PBX so I'll show you how to install it and how to program it how to configure it to work with your PBX to be able to use it to transfer calls and to be use it, able to use it to receive external calls external GSM calls from within and outside this building so this is what it looks like inside So this is the handle and it has its own it has its own cable too. So the coily cable is the one you use for the handle and there is another cable too which is the one for the that goes from the PABS to the device. So this particular cable is not your regular cable. This is four points end to end. Four points end to end. All the four points of this cable is connected and has to be connected. And that is what we are going to be using for the PBX to work. So this is the spot where it will go into. Is it indicated on the device already? So you plug it here and then you plug it in to your PBX or into your face plate the face plate that we connected for other phone uses just two point to be able to power on the phones but this is a gsm console this is a console rather it is different from your regular phone it needs four point for you to be able to turn on so all the four points has to be connected to the pabx for it to work so hence the reason for its own special cable So I'm going to connect this and then I'll begin the configuration for this particular console.
So you can see all the phones in the office are all working. 